Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and I'd like to do a complete beginner's guide to Planet Crafter, shall we? This game is a fantastic survival crafting building experience that completely slipped my radar. And I gotta tell you, once I started playing it, I really couldn't stop. I found the play loop to be so engaging that I really wanted to just go further and further and further and see what I could do to terraform and, well, craft the planet. Now, I will say that as I was playing, there were a lot of intricacies to the game that I missed initially, things that viewers helped me locate, and things I learned through my own trial and error playing the game. And in this guide, what I'm going to do is start us up a brand new file and explain to you the very basics of the game. I'm going to talk to you about the controls, the UI, some basic tips and tricks, some survival techniques, and other little details that are not otherwise explained or you might miss if you were playing without any assistance. However, what I'm not going to do is spoil the game for you, tell you the fastest, most efficient path to get to the end game or anything like that at all, because I really love how the game just continues to evolve. It has a mysterious story. More technologies become available as you really start to get a feel for the scope of things, and I don't want to ruin that. So what we're going to do is have a brand new game where I explain my thought process so you can understand what to do and how to enjoy this game at your own pace. So I'm going to start us a brand new game and um, it's going to be called Standard 2. That's totally fine. And we're going to use the game mode standard, which is just the default settings. And what I used in my Let's Play, by the way, I have a Let's Play of this game it's over 20 episodes long at the moment probably going to be longer when it's all said and done if you want to see me play and experience it for the first time so i'm not going to change any settings i'm just going to dive in right here and then i'm just going to click load on standard two okay so you drop into the game just like this in an escape pod and there are some tutorial steps that are in the upper left of the heads-up display or the UI. And it says, craft a backpack, tier 1. Equip the backpack. Craft an oxygen tank. Equip the oxygen tank. And craft the microchip for construction. So you start with basically nothing. There's very little story in this game. You, you learn it as you go. And it's fine. It's more of uh, a, an experience. But let's go ahead and check out one thing that I missed, actually, uh, in terms of story. You'll see that you have a message in your escape pod. Now, I'm just using uh, the mouse to move around the camera, and WASD will move you. I am playing on PC using mouse and keyboard. And you can click on, left-click, read message. And it says, welcome to your assigned planet. Your mission is to advance the terraformation process of this world. Generate O2, heat, and pressure to do so. First, reach 175.00 TI and create a blue atmosphere. This is from Sentinel Corporation, and it's year 3050. So it gives you a rough idea of what we need to do. TI is short for terraformation index, and it's kind of a rough score that you can see that you will always have displayed that tells you how far you have made it in terms of transforming this into a world that is like Earth, that is habitable by uh, humans and, and life. So I'm going to close this message. You can see in the upper right, my terraformation index is actually zero. Now the doorway is open, okay, uh, which is alarming, but as long as you're inside this thing, you have oxygen. You can see in the bottom left of the heads-up display, you have a heart, which is your health, and also really your hunger, mostly. A water drop, which is your hydration level, and your O2, which is, well, your oxygen. And if any of those, um, if your O2 depletes, for example, you die. 
and if you die in this game, the penalty is not too bad. All that happens if you die is you will lose some of the materials that you had in your inventory, and there will be a blue storage crate like this one out where you died with the rest of your stuff if you can make it back to your corpse and get it. It's not too punishing of a game in that fashion. Also, just as a, you know, kind of overall explanation of what this game is, there really aren't hostile life forms or enemies that you have to fight. This is a solo player experience that's more casual, where you are battling hunger, hydration, and oxygen, but not so much hostile entities. Um, and I personally like that a lot, uh, but it's good to know up front. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is see this little station here. This is a crafting station. And if I left click, I can open this up and you could see, okay, I could craft an oxygen capsule. Now, if I uh, mouse over this, a tooltip will open and it will tell you the ingredients for crafting this. It takes two cobalt. Cobalt is a resource that looks just like that little picture that we can find outside on the ground. And we can pick it up uh, using our little mining laser multi-tool. Reminds me of the multi-tool from No Man's Sky to get. And water. We can get ice to use our crafting table to convert one ice into a bottle of water. A bottle of water will completely replenish your hydration. And an, o an oxygen capsule will completely replenish your oxygen regardless of what the max is, at least in my experience. This is the construction microchip that we need to make. And your multi-tool has chips and chip slots and you can put in new features to allow more functionality so this will allow us to build things for example the deconstruction well you get it you guessed it this allows you to deconstruct things and there's a torch or a flashlight that we can make here's the backpack that we want to make and we want to make this immediately to increase our backpack size and here's the oxygen tank, which will increase our O2 capacity. Right now, in the bottom left, you can see that our O2 is at 100. And that is the current max that we have. So, you see that as I'm talking, the game is not pausing in these menus. My, ox my uh, water, my hydration rather, is running down, and so is my food to some extent. But it's not too big of a deal because if I left click on this tank, you could see that they actually gave us four space food. Uh, it's this delicious looking silver package and it restores 40 health or hunger, depending on what you want to call that. It, it's really health, but you very rarely get injured. If you fall from a great distance, you will get, you take damage, but that's basically it. Um, then there's a water bottle that we start with so we can get something to drink and there's some O2 and we even start with a little seed but we can't do anything with that at the moment. You see that it's getting dark outside, there are night and day cycles in the game and let's step out and explore. And now this is where we are, look at this planet, it reminds you very much of you know the surface of Mars or something and there must be a lot of iron. Uh, you know, in the surface here to turn it on this kind of like reddish color. And indeed, we see just laying on the ground our resources. If you mouse over it or aim at it with your reticule, which is at the center of the screen, it'll tell you what this is. This is silicon. And if I left click, I blast it and it goes into my inventory. I push tab to open my inventory and you can see here's the silicon here. Currently, I can hold 12 items and it's telling me oh, oxygen low. Let's go back inside and replenish my oxygen, and it gets goes back pretty quickly once I get inside the craft. Don't worry about the fact that the door is just propped open. We're totally fine inside here. Now, you see if I push tab, I have 12 slots. This is how your inventory works. There is no weight. There is just slots, and each item takes up a slot. I also have my gear, and this is where we will equip our chips. We currently have four slots for those. So I'm going to go out and we need iron right away. And it looks like this. You'll learn very quickly what the different items are, the different resources are, just by sight. This is titanium. And I have pushed shift to run. I personally have it so that I toggle sprint 
because you will notice very quickly there is no stamina in this game, so you always should be running because it, it doesn't do any it doesn't drain your O2 or your water or your hunger any more that I can see, so you should always run. If you push escape and go to options um, and go to controls, you'll see that you can rebind the keys to a, to a certain extent and you can also click right here toggle running this is what i have uh so that you just push shift and you're always running then you push shift again to stop running so you don't have to hold shift there's some other um functions here like q is our construction but we don't have the chip for that f is your flashlight we don't have that yet and m is the map but we don't have that either uh, and it'll take us quite a long time to get there you can also push F2 if you want to just turn on, you know, turn the heads up display off to do photo mode. And now you can see I have two iron. So our backpack actually just takes two iron to craft. So if I use this crafting station and I go over the backpack, I can just left click and make it. And immediately it's right here. And all I have to do is left click and I will equip this backpack. So we now have the backpack equipped. Now this is the same slots that you'll use for um, oxygen tank, backpack, other upgrades, as well as your chips. So you see it's very tight, but we can expand this as we go. Now the backpack, once I equipped it, you see it gave me another row of slots. Now I have four more slots. It says backpack T1, that means tier one. And as we go through the game, we will increasingly upgrade all of our stuff, tier two and so on, to make it, uh, to increase our function. Now you see I'm running low, on water so let's go pick up some ice and I could just turn this into water and as I'm exploring out here there's a blue crate let's open this and I'm gonna just push this button that's the left arrow to take everything you can also push this right arrow button to deposit everything into a storage chest this checkerboard button will sort your inventory or the container based on item type group them together I'm going to push escape and get back because I am going to run out of oxygen if I just stand out here talking to you now the game will tell you when you're running low on oxygen but I'm telling you what it's not like Subnautica when you really have to monitor it because it will tell you your oxygen's low when it's too late to really do anything about it unless you're carrying O2 which is a great idea so I need to make some water. I'm gonna go in here, but notice if I left click on water, I'll just make one water bottle and I'll exit the crafting menu. But if I use this again and I hold left control, I can multi-craft. I'll make an oxygen capsule as well. And I need a cobalt and a magnesium to make my O2 tank. And so you can hold control to multi-craft. This also applies to building when you get there. Left control allows you to multi-craft. Um, and it's super, super helpful. Big shout out to my friend, Big Vlad, and everyone else who's been giving me amazing tips on this game as I go. I'm going to right click on the water to consume it, and we're good. Now, food is a little bit funky. It, t You know, I think you're out of 100, so this gauge is always out of 100, so if I eat this um, now, uh, there's probably a little bit of overkill but food will not be a problem for us as we're going to continue to find it. Now, what you should do once you get the basics, and I recommend just doing all the first steps, that's what I did before I did anything else, was I just gathered enough materials, uh, magnesium. Sometimes, by the way, like if you look away when you're trying to craft it, it will leave a section behind. You did not pick it up until it's gone. You do not need to hold the, the mining like in No Man's Sky. You just need to click it once, and you will pick up the stuff. And I'm just going to keep picking things up until it says inventory full. And I'm going to go back into our pod. All right, and I'm going to craft. And I can now make an O2 tank. And you see that it has now repopulated my first steps in the upper left by giving me more directives, things that I can do. And my oxygen is 100. If I equip this by left clicking, I go up to 145 and it fills up. And now I have more space. I'm going to open this chest and I'm going to deposit some items. I don't need to carry around this much water. 
nor do I need to carry around space food. Actually, if you control click, control is your friend in this game, you will deposit all items from your inventory into the container of that type. So you can multi-dump. Or you could just dump everything, but I don't want to do that. I am going to right-click on space food just to eat. You see how it didn't fill me up entirely. And I'm now going to look at what else I need to build. I need to build the construction microchip, so I need two magnesium for that. I would like to build... Um, everything needs magnesium, interestingly. And it's really dark, so, you know, flashlight would be good, but you could see just fine. Look at that enormous moon. So as you're going around and getting your bearings, just keep your eyes peeled. The resources are all around you. You'll know what they look like uh, visually very, very soon. Cobalt has this blue glow, magnesium kind of looks like uh, quartz crystals just jutting out of the ground. But you want to keep your eyes peeled for blue containers like there's one over here you can jump with the space bar by the way and this container have we opened it we have not i'm going to try to pick up everything that i can uh i can't pick up everything i'm going to right click the o2 container just to use it i'm going to pick up this blueprint there's even aluminum here which is a more rare resource and there's magnesium so in this case i'm actually going to shift back um, a titanium to pick up the magnesium and I'm going to run back home it's a bit wasteful to use the O2 container but you're going to be playing inventory Tetris a lot good thing is you could just put things in that chest and um, it will never despawn if it's in a chest and you can even just drop things on the ground by clicking this little arrow like just drop it down and then the silicon will go there and you'll have to click it again to pick it up now i don't know what the despawn rate is on that sometimes when you log out those things will disappear so don't drop anything important all right i'm going to go here and i want to make my construction microchip i'm going to left click on this and i'm going to click it in and then can i make the um, deconstruction i need silicon and i need more magnesium and silicon no problem but you'll see i don't have enough room for a torch currently anyway because I want construction and deconstruction so we'll have to wait on the flashlight now that I could do construction they're telling us to craft a living compartment a living compartment door a drill a wind turbine and a crafting screen so this living compartment is going to be like our base so if I push Q I open up the construction menu there's actually a lot of things on here that we can make that they didn't tell us about. There's uh, furniture, and some of this is just cosmetic, but obviously the storage crate is very functional, and the desk is imp important for putting these computer monitors on top of. We can also make another crafting station, a veggie tube to generate oxygen, and we do have a seed if we want to do that, a drill which generates pressure. And how do I know that? Well, it says right there in the description it generates pressure, but in the bottom left, it tells you how much pressure it makes per second and how much energy it consumes per second. The wind turbine generates positive 1.2 energy per second. The veggie tube consumes energy. The crafting station does as well, and so does the heater. So most things consume energy. Notably, the living compartment does not, and it the living compartment always provides oxygen without any power and for this reason the living compartment is a fantastic thing to build as you're exploring as an oxygen waypoint but note that you can't get inside unless you have a door so what i'd like to do is travel with two iron and a titanium plus another iron titanium and silicon so three iron three titanium and a silicon so i can drop down a compartment and a compartment door at any place create a place to restore my oxygen um, and also have a little base away from home. Now, they want us to make one now because we can't expand this escape pod or shuttle at all. So I'm going to go ahead and push Q, and I'm just going to build one right here. Now, this is the build screen. You'll recognize this from many games. When it's green, it's okay. If it's red, it's not. So I can't build it on top of this rock. 
and I need to have it above the ground. Now, if you want to make it perfectly flat, you can use foundations um, like this so that you can expand your base. So I'll put it on top of the foundation, for example. Oh, but that's no good. Where I built it is terrible. We'll talk about that in a moment. I need to get oxygen. I need to deconstruct chip. That's hilarious. Oh, by the way, I'm going to put this blueprint away. I can't use this currently. And um, I need this, so I need silicon. So let's just get a piece of silicon really fast. It's this kind of black bubbly stuff. I'll take a piece of iron as well. And I'm going to run over here. Now I'm going to make the deconstruction chip. And I'm going to equip it. Now, I can deconstruct. Now, you can use the mouse wheel to switch between your different tools. So, the hammer is construction. You look at the multi-tool screen on the bottom right to see that. The hammer with the X is deconstruct. And this beam is like the flashlight. Or, um, yeah, it's the flashlight. Any of them you can use, but it's saying warning, low power. And so, I'm going to deconstruct this right here. Whenever you deconstruct something, you get the full refund. So, note that, um, and let's see, I want to make sure that the depth is right on this because I built it in a foolish place. This is fine. It's not perfect, but it's sitting up there. The building can get a little wonky. You can always adjust it, but you get a full refund whenever you deconstruct. So, do things however you like. I'm going to build steps going up to this. Um, oops, but not yet. I'm going to um, run back here. Now it's telling us we have low power, so we can build a wind turbine. And I'll just drop it right here. Power has been restored. So maybe the compartment does take power and it just doesn't tell you. I'm not sure about that, but here's what I do now. You do not need to connect this turbine with wires like in No Man's Sky or many games at all. You can build this anywhere on the map and it will provide power to all of your facilities wherever they are on the map. So it's really super convenient. This is a game has a lot of quality of life stuff that's just awesome. So build as many of these as you want. There is no detriment to them and they just provide power. They take only one iron. Speaking of iron, uh, let me go pick up magnesium. Here's some, but check this out. If I deconstruct, you could deconstruct this storage crate once it's empty and get yourself a free iron. I like to do that too because it tells me um, that I there's no crate there, that I've got everything from it. So I'm not like, oh, running over and just continuously getting bummed out when there's nothing there. I'm going to build another wind turbine. Now we're going to build a door, but I need titanium and silicon to do that. So let me pick up a titanium... Let me pick up an iron. Let me pick up another titanium. And my hydration is low. So I'm going to put a door. Um, oh, I need silicon. That's right. Run over here. Pick up some silicon. And I'm going to run back and get some oxygen and some water. Always keep an eye on the bottom left at your levels. Because the game warns you very... The, Warning about water is fine because it gives you plenty of time. I'm going to right click and just drink some water. But the O2, in my opinion, you got to watch that. But luckily, as I said, the death penalty isn't too severe. And I'm going to go ahead and put a door right here. And now we've made a little base. And I'm going to put stairs and you can rotate with the wheel. And you could put things underground until you get it nice and lined up and perfect. I'm in. And this has lights, it has O2, and we're good to go. Now, if I want to build another one, I need some more iron. And I'll show you how that works. Check this out. One iron. Two iron. Perfect. And I'm going to run. And we can build another living compartment right next to this, and it'll snap onto it pretty easily. Don't worry, there's no foundation. Doesn't matter. 
like I said, this game is super friendly to the player. Some of the stuff isn't realistic, but whatever. You can build a foundation if you want to make it realistic, and it'll help you line things up and keep them flat, but it automatically connects these two rooms, and now I have a lot of space. This is the main reason you want to build this base, um, so that you have plenty of space to build your screens and your heaters and all that stuff. So our objective should really be just to follow what it wants. So it wants us to build a drill. Okay, fine. Let's get titanium and iron. But here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to run out and I'm going to get... Um, titanium is fine, but I'm going to get some more iron. Because in the beginning of the game especially, and to be honest, throughout the entire game, inventory space is an issue. So in our new base... I'm going to just build a storage crate. It only takes one iron. I'm going to put it right by the door, and this will allow me to offload stuff that I don't want to carry. So I'm going to control, deposit. Actually, I'll just click deposit everything, and I don't need to carry water and food. I never carry water and food unless I plan on going out really, really far because those deplete so slowly that I usually have plenty of time to get back. Carrying oxygen is wise, I'm just going to eat this food right now. But now I can have a free inventory to go out and explore. And remember, we had that storage crate that we want to empty. Now, I want to build a drill and a heater. So I need silicon, iron, titanium, iron. Let me get some titanium. And you'll start to really quickly see what are the basic resources that we need a ton of at the beginning of the game and just gather these up. Now, as I'm gathering, let me explain, too. The storage crates actually have a little name on them, and you can click to label them if you want to compartmentalize all of your stuff. I don't do that at this stage in the game for two reasons. Number one, it's so early that I don't have, i um, pushing tab just to see my inventory, a ton of stuff, so it's not that big of a deal to sort through it. Um, but also... Let me go in here. Let me take all of this stuff. Good. Let me go back to our base. This is a slight spoiler, but it's very helpful. And everyone, when I was playing, told me this. This area where your crash pod is, is the starter area. And as you terraform the world, you'll get plenty of warning about this. But this basin that we're in is no longer going to become suitable as we get several hours into the game for us to be here. So do not go all out and make this a permanent base. Now, even if you do, it's not a big deal because you can deconstruct everything and get all the resources back. But it's good to just let you know that this is kind of like temporary storage, temporary digs, until we uh, settle on a better place to build a more permanent base. All right, so what do we need in here? Well, we need a lot of stuff. I'm going to build some quality of life stuff. I want a crafting station in here. And the arrow is where you interact with it. So you always want to kind of have that facing toward you. So it's easy to get to. They want us to build a drill. The drill goes outside. Like if you try to build this inside, it'll be red. It has to go outside. And at first, I didn't understand what this was doing. I'm going to build it. I thought it was drilling for resources, but no, it's drilling to create pressure, to create atmospheric pressure to make this a more habitable world. So the wind turbine does nothing for our terraformation index, but the drill does. Look in the upper right. You can see our TI slowly going up because we are creating pressure. TI is a calculation of how much oxygen we're creating, how much pressure, and how much heat. Those are the three main indices at first, and they will increase as we go in the game. But those are the ones we're working with at the beginning. Now, they want us to make these screens, and these are super helpful, but you want to put these on a desk. So over here, I'm just going to turn this around, and I'm going to put a little desk over here. And if we want to make a screen like a blueprint screen, let's make this. You see, you kind of need to set it down. So I like to put one monitor per desk space and now you have a blueprint screen it looks like this padlock if i left click on it now you could see the tech tree and i love this because when i saw this like my mind exploded and i fell in love with the game 
Here's all of the blueprints that we get, and like many games, you unlock blueprints based on progress, but in this game, the progress is gated behind the different terraformation goals that we have. So there's a pressure goal, there's a heat goal, there's an oxygen, and there's a terraformation overall goal. And these will unlock when we reach these thresholds. So if you want a better O2 tank, well, you better build a bunch of drills so you can get to 70 NPA um, pressure. And you can see we're actually building up to that pretty quickly. Now, the other thing that this blueprint monitor can do is decode the blueprint microchips that we find. So we found one, and it's over here in our storage crate. I'm actually going to pick up everything that I can here. Uh, I'm going to put this back and take this and start moving everything into our base. And I'm going to go here, and once you have one of these blueprint microchips they're blue they look like this in your inventory you can interact with the blueprint screen and click on this button in the bottom right decode a blueprint microchip and what did we get we learned a mining speed microchip so this will if i go to the crafting station you can see it right here this will boost our mining time um in, reduce mining time by 10 percent. but i'm not going to make this now because i don't have enough slots or wait a minute Look what just became available. So you have to check in on your crafting station, on your monitors, on your build screen all the time because new blueprints will unlock and sometimes you might miss the notification. We can build the exoskeleton tier one and this increases our equipment capacity. So I'm gonna build this right away. I'm gonna left click on this. I'm gonna push tab to open our inventory and I'm just gonna left click on, well, I have to um, de-equip something. So I'm gonna, just take away my construction blueprint right now, and then I'm going to left click on this. It takes a slot itself, but it gives us four slots. So now, the ordering of these slots makes no difference, by the way. It's not like No Man's Sky where you want to, you know, have things adjacent. It doesn't matter. Um, we have three slots to play with, which means we can build the torch, and we can build the mining speed increase as well, and add these on. Um... It's worth mentioning you cannot build more O2 tanks and more backpacks and, and put them on here. You can only upgrade the existing tier. At least I think that's the case. Um, I'll show you by making the... Well, just trust me. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I don't want to make it because we don't have the means to destroy the backpack at the, at the moment if we did make it. I just put it in my inventory, but uh, I'm not going to waste time with it right now. I'm now just gathering resources to I, so I can make the rest of these monitors. My inventory is full because I foolishly didn't deposit my goods. We're going to make way more storage, make life easier on ourselves. You can see the TI is up to 50. And I'm going to drop down right here, a storage container. And you see there's not enough space for it right there. And you can't build it up high. So I'll put it right here. Or should I? No. I'm gonna get I'm gonna plan for more space. I'm gonna build another room right there. And we'll get that going in a moment. This is almost full. I'm gonna put all the food in, all the O2 in, I'm gonna drink a water, I'm gonna put in all the titanium, magnesium, ice, and now we're full. So now I have more space over here. I'm going to go back to our little hab. And I'm going to open this, take everything out, and I'm going to deconstruct this. Um, I cannot deconstruct this, but I can deconstruct that. I can't deconstruct the pod itself. But this gives us the ability to build another chest. Now, be sure... You see how I had deconstruct selected? I've done this on accident many times. Make sure that you don't have deconstruct selected when you're trying to build something or trying to mine or something because you'll just break whatever you're aiming at. So I'm going to just put a chest right here. You could put it in the doorways. It's fine. It just sticks out a little bit more, and I don't mind at all. I'm going to build it right here, and I'm going to put in my cobalt and my food and this and this. Now, you could click on here um, on the, the name, and you could, you know, say food if you wanted and make this only food you know you could come over here take out your food and then take out everything that wasn't food and put all the food in here 
if you wanted to be organized or whatever, um, that's up to you. We just received a blueprint for O2 Tank 2, which is amazing. We want to make that right away. What's it take? So you see it, it's going to consume our oxygen tank tier 1, and it takes silicon, cobalt, titanium, and magnesium. And we can easily get all that stuff. They also want us to craft a heater and a veggie tube. A veggie tube I can make easily. Iron, ice, and magnesium. The heater is going to take a little bit more because it requires iridium. There's a chest over here. Let's go get this. We haven't found any iridium yet. Uh, oh, this was the chest that I... Right. Just emptied. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's pick up magnesium. Cobalt. Silicon. Cobalt. Fantastic. Iron. Silicon. Just keep an eye on your oxygen. Make sure you actually do mine it. You just get yourself a little bit of everything. Push tab, check your inventory, get titanium. Remember, you could push this checkerboard to sort things, see how much you have of each. I like to just have a little bit of everything. Uh, you can't pin blueprints at this stage of the game, so you either have to write down what you need for your recipes or just make sure you have plenty. Now we got to get back. We're out of O2. Something that's dangerous about the game early is that you really have to good, have a good direction sense for your base um, because... And we might die. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can make it back. Oh, we just made it. Okay. If we would have died, we would have died on our steps, which is fine. But that's the thing. Just as I was um, displaying through my own foolishness there, I, I'm used to my Let's Play where I have oxygen that lasts for days. Don't have that right here. So I'm going to build another container. And just kind of put it over here. I like to keep all my stuff together. And let's just deposit our stuff like that. Sort this up. And this container, um, let me... Yeah, let me get this out. I'm just taking out anything that's a basic resource. See if I can put it over here. I can't, but I'm going to build one more storage container right here. There you go. And put all this stuff over here. Okay. So I haven't really sorted too much yet, but this can be, you know, um, uh, survival. Like, this could be just water, to be honest. And then I could just take out this and... I can leave my O2 in there, but mostly water. All right, now we want to make a terraformation screen and energy levels. So terraformation and energy levels, they take iron, silicon, and magnesium. Okay, so I have... Uh, I'm going to put this in food, even though we're not going to eat it. It's We'll show you what we'll use that for later, but I have silicon and I have magnesium. I just need iron. So let's go get a couple of iron. And we can fill up on some other stuff too. Always need silicon and titanium early. And here we go. Iron. Iron is like, you just need it for everything right when you start. So I like to just try and get as much of it as I can. Titanium, good. All right. Water. Okay. Now, I'm not exploring very far away from the base right now because I like to do a lot of the first steps so that I can, inventory full, acquire good O2 tank. You also see in the upper left, it says reach blue sky. That is the marker that they want us to get to, which is 175,000. I think I misread that. It's not .000, it's, that was supposed to be a comma, or it may have been a comma in this font. Anyway, um, you see we're at 100, and that looks like so far away, but once we start building more um, heaters, drills, and veggie tubes, we're going to crank that up really quickly. Now, let's go ahead and build um, the terraformation screen. Now, this is a big wall-hanging screen, so let's just put it right here. And let's build the energy level screen right here. Now, you could click on this to see currently we consume 2 kilowatts of power and we need 
uh, we're only producing 2.4 so we're going to need to make a bunch more wind turbines this is your surplus right here you have available 0.4 so you don't have to do the math you can just look right here you could see over here your consumption of what everything takes and actually okay it wasn't my base itself it's the crafting stations and the screens that are taking power all right so good to know and over here you can just look at the screen you don't click on it it tells you here's your oxygen heat pressure and terraformation at a glance you could see this you also get the information in the blueprint screen if you want but it's better over here you could see it just going up you could see how many you're getting per second and how many you have overall okay so at this point what do we want to build well we can build a veggie tube so let's do that veggie tubes go inside so I'm just going to put one over here for now. And it doesn't do anything. <laughs> By the way, it consumes 0.35 power, which means we have um, 0 0.05 power. So we definitely want to make another wind turbine out here. I'm actually going to hold control and build as many as I can, which is two. So I control built those two without going back to the build screen. And now you can see if I go to energy, I actually have uh, 2.45 surplus. And that seed that I put in food, this uh, Lirma, we're going to just take it over here and put it in the veggie tube right now. And now we are producing 0.15 oxygen per second. Now, if I take this out, you see we make none. This is not great for making oxygen. This is better for other stuff. Uh, growing grass but for right now this is good this is what we are want and we don't have any other seeds to grow anyway so the veggie tube doesn't do anything by itself you have to have a seed to put inside it like we do right there to make it produce oxygen okay so at this point um i'm going to put away my basic resources like this and i need to drink some water and I need to actually take out this ice. Do I have any more ice that I'm storing? No. I'm going to make some more water. Control clicking to do that. And I'm going to put away the water here. I'll take an oxygen just to carry around with me for safety. And we have uh, built everything except for the progress screen. Which... Uh, they want us to build what we actually can't build until... You can see it right here. Um, we get more heat. So they, they're they suggesting that we build that, but we need to be generating heat to get there, and we need iridium for that. So we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Everyone, this is a good first episode of our Complete Beginner's Guide to Planet Crafter. This is going to be a series. There's a lot to explain in this game, but I love it. I have so much fun playing the game. And we're going to cover all of these basics as we go what we did so far was we built our base we talked about power pressure o2 we've upgraded we've got an exosuit we've got tier one backpack o2 tank we have some chips on here and we built some screens so we could see our progress at terraforming i hope you all have found this to be useful and fun and i will check you all in the next episode thanks so much for watching take care